can't hear me, jump up and down and wave. Now how did you know to do that if you couldn't hear me? Come on now. So, um, let me just ask you guys a question. How, uh, is anyone here actually interested in becoming an actor for a a profession? Anybody? Just a few people? Okay. Of the actors, are you interested in acting or on stage or are you just interested in voice acting to do anime and things like that? All right. Let me tell you something, there's no difference. If you want to be a voice actor, you need to be an actor first. Uh, it doesn't do you any good when you're in the, in the sound booth and the director says, okay, I need you to be really angry at this, on this line. And if you haven't studied acting and you don't know how to be angry, uh, it's not going to do you any good. For one, one thing, occasionally when you're doing voice uh, anime, what you're doing is you're putting, uh, in English, English words into uh, Japanese animation. It's already been done in Japanese. So, we get the English translation and we change it into uh, English words that kind of fit into the mouths of the characters. So if, if you're on in the booth and you see the line that says, I'm going to tear your head off and eat it for lunch. Okay, say that's the line. All right. Now, normally, if you get a, a line like that, the normal reaction is you're angry, right? You're threatening somebody, right? I'm going to tear your head off and eat it for lunch, right? Wow. But the problem may be that in the cartoon or the animation, the character's smiling. He's got a big smile on his face. But you've got to say the line. So if you don't have the acting experience of being on stage and, and taking classes and, and knowing that sometimes you can say a line, the words, with a different meaning behind them, uh, that's the sort of thing that you learn when you go to acting conservatories and take acting classes and, and things like that. So when you see a character smiling, and he says, I'm going to tear your head off and eat it for lunch. Kind of has a different feeling to it, right? It's a little, in a way, it's a lot more threatening because the guy's spookier. Like the Joker. He's got a big smile on his face. Also, you need to know, uh, as an actor, there are different styles of acting. There's a, a, a modern movies kind of acting where you just kind of say, hey man, what you doing? Hey man, how you doing? How are you? What's going on? That would be normal, everyday acting. But if they want a certain style, say the, the thing takes place in 16th century France, and the line is, how are you today, sir? Well, you're not going to say, how are you today, sir? You're going to speak a little differently. And for that, you need training, voice training and dialect training, things like that. So that you would say, how are you today, sir? Now, if you were on stage, you would say, how, how are you today, sir? Or you take off your hat, how are you today, sir? It's a whole different thing. And you, you're just doing this. I took a class on just how to do that. And 
it's, it's a lot of years and a lot of training. So as far as being a professional actor goes, I tell people a couple of things. If you really have it in you that that's the only thing that will make you happy in life, then do it. Just do it. Go for it. If you're not sure, go for it. Give it a try. You'll find out soon enough if you don't like it. If you think all the studying and the, the uh, uh, there's a lot of emotion that goes with trying to do a scene and failing. Uh, that's how you learn. You try something, and if it doesn't work, you learn. Well, that doesn't work. I'll try something different. That's what classes are. It's like uh, bodybuilding. If you have anyone here do athletics and, and, and try things athletically, well, you won't. So you know that you only get better when you fail. And that's what, that's what you do with acting classes. You do something and you try something and you fail and then you, you understand that this is what I need to do to make that happen. Or that doesn't work for me. I can't, I'm not good at that. Let's try another thing. Okay? But like I said, if it's in your heart that you're driven to do that, then that's what you should do. And trust me, if you find anything else in life that makes you happier or even as happy as acting, you will end up doing it. Trust me. Because there's a lot that goes on that makes it very, very difficult. Your jobs aren't a regular job. You may not work for years, literally years. And you go on auditions and you get a lot of rejections. You get, no, 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 we don't like him. He stinks. And then the next guy says, he's, he's fantastic. So you have to be able to deal with that. Emotionally, you have to be strong inside. I had a teacher once who said uh, an actor has to be, has to have a, a very thick skin, as tough as nails, because you get criticized by by uh, casting directors and producers, and uh, people laugh at you. And then when you're in a, let's say, a movie or a play, something like that, the critics will will write sometimes wonderful things about you, but sometimes horrible things. Oh my God. They'll just say the worst things about you, like you did something to them. But at the same time, you have to be vulnerable and open so that you can express emotions like love, fear, any emotion. You have to be put yourself on the line. As, as an actor. And that takes practice and study. And um, as far as being a, a voice actor, there's other things. Like, like I told you about uh, the character may say something with a smile, even though it's an angry sentence. Also, with, with uh, dubbing into English, a lot of times, especially with Japanese, uh, animation or Chinese animation. The, the Japanese and the Chinese language, there's a lot of just the mouth on the, on the uh, animation characters just goes na 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 na. Well, that's not English, right? We say things and our mouths move like this, and, and uh, but it's our job as actors try to make the English words look like it's coming out of those mouths, even though they're going na na na. The writer will try to make words as close as he can get to the mouth movements, but as actors, we have to try to fit it in. So sometimes there's a pause. So sometimes it's the line is, it's really nice to be here today. I'm so happy to see you all. And you see a couple of flips on the character, and that's it. And as the actor, you have to try to fit that in and make it sound natural. 
So he says, it's really nice to be here today. I'm glad to see you. What else can you do? Right? Or if the mouth is going really slow, or there's pauses, and you know, you, you, it, it, it's kind of unnatural sometimes. You have to say it's it's really nice to be here today. I'm glad to see you all. Now, how do you make that sound natural? As an actor, that's your challenge when you're in the recording room. So you have to make it work somehow. You have to say maybe it's really nice to be here today. I'm so glad to see you all. So those are things that you get when you take classes and training and, and you practice, practice, and practice. Um, and you also have to be able to listen to what the director tells you. Uh, the director may want you to say a line angrier or happier than you originally said it. So you have to be able to take the direction from the director and do what he tells you. Uh, I had one director who, uh, he called me up and he said, uh, Richard, can you come in on Friday? I have ten, ten lines for you to do. Now normally 10 lines takes me, I don't know, half an hour to, to get 10 lines in, which is pretty, pretty fast. So I made a joke. He, he said, uh, I need you to do 10 lines. And I said, okay, well, that'll book me for four or five hours then, okay? And I thought I'd hear him laugh, but he didn't laugh. There was just silence on the other end of the phone. And I said, Kevin, are, are you okay? Is everything okay? He said, Richard, that's not funny. I said, what's wrong? He says, you have no idea what, what I've been through to this last week's on this particular show. I said, what? He said, the producer of the show insists that I use new voices. He doesn't like all the old voices. He wants new voices. The problem is that all the new voices that he wants are actors who don't have any experience just acting voiceover or even acting in general. So I get a person whose who's, the line is, I'm going to rip your face off. And the actor says, says it like this, I'm going to rip your face off. Kevin says, so I tell him, I need you to be angry. So do take two. Take two is, I'm going to rip your face off. He says, take five, I'm going to rip your face off. He says, it takes 10, 20 times to finally get the emotion out of the actor that I want. So, training is very important. Does anybody have any questions? I don't know if I can. Yeah. Anyone? About acting in general? Come on up. Real, I think one of the reasons Kenshin is so popular is because he reflects the values that we all have. I mean, we all want to be badass, don't we? To be able to, you know, beat the crap out of somebody who's giving somebody else a hard time. But we don't 
most of us, unless we were these guys that just did that uh, stuff that were just the martial arts, so that we don't have the ability to do that. But Kenshin does. And I think that's something we can all relate to. That's something else about acting in general. <clears throat> Every character, as an actor, you have to find something in that character that you can identify with. Something. Okay? Even if you're playing the bad guy, there's something about that bad guy that you have to be able to identify with. You've got to figure something out. Even if you're playing somebody horrible. Say you're playing uh, Adolf Hitler. Okay? Now the way as an actor, you can't approach it the way you, you as a person feel about somebody like that. You have to identify with his thinking. You have to say, yeah, those horrible people, they did this and this and this to my country and it's up to me to save my country. Because that's how he thought. He was crazy. He was a maniac. But if you're playing that kind of character, that's what you have to do. At the same time, let's say you're playing somebody like uh, the Buddha or Jesus, somebody, you know, very holy that, that helps people. Boy, you can't play that and be interesting as an actor. It's boring. Who wants to see that? Oh, what a, uh, oh bless you. That's so nice. Bless you. Are you sick? No, let me heal you anyway. But I'm not sick. Oh, it's all right. I'll make you sick. Now I can heal you. It doesn't work that way. So as an actor, what you have to do is you have to play the human part of whoever it is. Say you're playing Jesus. Make him have a real good sense of humor. Okay? That's interesting. Because you don't see too many pictures of uh, Jesus having a belly laugh. But I'm sure he must have. He must have had a great sense of humor. So, as an actor, those are things that you, that you explore and you think about. Okay, long answer to a short question. Yes. Um, when you were saying to fill in for all the mouth flaps, if there's extra, is that why you started doing the, um, I'm happy to meet you, I am, the repetition? Yeah, that, I hated that. Was that, was that your decision? They told you to do that, to fill in those... I hated that, that the old, the old, I'm happy to be okay. here. I, yes, I, that I am. I'm happy, I'm so happy to be, I was in the booth, and I'm looking at the script, and I said to the, the director, I said, who talks like that? Nobody talks like that. Nice to be here, that it is. Who says that? Oh my God, I hated that. That, that was the second version of, of uh, Samurai. The first Samurai I personally liked better because um, they didn't do things like that. They didn't fill in. But what's interesting is a lot of the, the fans, the anime people, prefer the second version because they felt it was more authentic to the original Japanese. Which, personally, I don't care. That's my own take. If you want an original Japanese, go get the original Japanese and learn how to speak Japanese. Uh, and also, uh, our Western... Uh Let's show you a show to you. Tagline, talk now to the tagline. Let's say for Patchy, right? For summer end. How much lines in that episode? How long does it take to record lines? You know, how many lines is it, how long does it take to record an episode? <clears throat> it, it depends. Um, when you're in the booth, it depends on the episode. If there are a lot of, a lot of lines, it takes longer. Um, sometimes the way they write the lines, they write them in little paragraphs. 
you're giving little speeches, and they, the writers try to help you with, uh, they give you little annotations to say that after this word, there's a, there's a, a pause, or there's a slight pause, or there's a longer pause. And that gives you a clue as to what's coming up. And sometimes it just depends. Uh, it, 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 if you just happen to hit the right in, uh, uh, pacing, then it can go faster. Uh, sometimes I literally have, have had to do almost 10 to 20 different takes on an, a grunt because the, the, the director didn't like the way the grunt sound. I, I, I'm not exaggerating. The grunt the, it was something like, <clears throat> and she said, okay, make it, it's not right. Make it a little, a little happier. How do you make a grunt happy, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's a little too happy. Take after take after take. And in the end, I did, <clears throat> which was exactly the same grunt the way I did it the first take and the director said that's it <laughs> and that happens a lot that happens a lot so generally the way they, they, they schedule you is they have an idea of how long it takes to do a certain number they're called loops um, it's a long story of why they call them loops. It goes back to the old days when they literally took a piece of, of film and they put it in a loop and they go around and around and over and over until you got it right. And nowadays they don't do that, but they, they, call, they still call them loops. Um, and, and if you have, generally it's about 25 loops uh, an hour. But if they're short things, if it's a fight or something like that, and you know what you're doing, you have some experience, it's pretty easy. Sometimes you don't even need, need to uh, do the loops separately. You can just watch the fight and play along. But again, there's a difference between uh, acting in your living room and acting in real life. <laughs> For instance, there's a difference in the sound of a, of a grunt if you're hitting somebody, as opposed to being hit, right? You have to think about if you've ever been hit, and most of us have, you know, it's a, <coughs> right? Ugh. Or if you've ever landed on your back or something, those of us who've played sports, we know what that feels like. <coughs> right? And it sounds differently than punching somebody. <coughs> So there's a difference. So, did that answer your question? I guess it did. So we have 10 more minutes. We'll look at his general and be able to hang. So we will take one more question, right? We have a, a storm troop. What are you, a storm troop? I'm oh, sorry. Am I under arrest? Um, Improvising as opposed to, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, improvising is when you just make up the words yourself. Um, that's a whole different kind of an acting. Um, usually when you take acting class, they give you lines that you memorize and then you, you interpret. Um, improvisation is a whole different thing. That's when you just you just talk with the situation. Now, if, for instance, with Kenshin, when you're playing the the, uh, the lead character, the lead character, generally you have to say what's written on the paper, whether you like it or not, that you do. Um, when you when you get to do something called Walla. That's when you improvise. Now what Walla is, all right, do you, do you guys all hear me talking, right? That's because 
for this, I'm the star of the, the movie. I'm talking. But in the background, you hear all that talking in the background? Well, in a movie, the lead character, the lead is the one who has the microphone. The background people don't. They're not mic. So if you are watching this on a, on a movie screen, all that sound in the background is actors who go into the studio in front of a mic and they improvise background noise. The other day I did something for Naruto and the, uh, the director said, okay Richard, uh, you're finished with your lines for Izumo. Can we get you to do some walla? Sure. So it was a scene in a marketplace, and I was all alone. And they said, just pretend you're shopping in the marketplace, talking about things people talk about when they're in the marketplace. So, you know, here I am, and, and I'm improvising all by myself, which is really hard. Usually it's easier when you have someone to, to speak to. You know, how much is that? That's an awful lot of money. I don't know. I don't know if I can afford that. I mean, I, I and, the, and by the way, the last one you gave me was really cheap, you know, and I should have gotten my money back from you, but I'm going to give you a break. But, you know, that, you know, 10, 10 centavos is way too much money. Come on, give me a break on that. But, hey, Bill, how are you doing? How's the wife? How's the family? That's improvisation. And the reason it's called Walla because back in the old days of motion pictures, they didn't have all those fancy sound systems like we do now with surround sound and, and that sort of thing where everything uh, has to be perfect. In the old days, they literally would, would grab studio secretaries and, and delivery people and uh, production assistants. They'd put them up in front of the microphone in the sound stage and they would say to them, okay, just stand here and say, walla, 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 peas and carrots, peas and carrots, rizza, rizza, razza, razza, walla, walla. And that's what they would do. And um, that's why it's called walla. We call it walla, walla. But what it is is the background noise. And these days, when you do walla, the sound is so uh, uh, precise. It's so advanced that if they want you to sound like a cockney, you go to sound like a cockney, right? They don't want you to sound like anything else. And if they want you to speak as a German accent, you speak as a German accent. But if they want you to actually speak German, they get people who speak German or Spanish without an accent. Because think about it, if you're, if you're in a movie, and let's say it takes place in Scotland, Right? So everyone's talking like they are in Scotland, and here you are in Scotland, and here you are, whatever the scene is. And then in the background, you hear one person saying, So what, dude? I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, this, this is really bad food. It doesn't taste that good. And I don't know. I was going to have a, 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 some haggis, but I don't I, It's too salty. Or, you're hearing that while the lead characters are trying to do that scene in Scotland and talking about the dragon or whatever. It ruins the whole movie. So this is the thing you need to actors. Are, you know, they, there's a saying, there are no small parts, only, you know, only small actors. Well, there are no small parts because every actor has to do his job well even if it's just in the background to make it work. And you have to approach it with that. Even if you don't have lines, it doesn't mean you can ruin the movie just by being out of place. That's all you have to do. And the whole thing is ruined. So everyone in the background, whether you're the lead character, everyone is an actor. And everyone has to appreciate that. It's because it's all a big, it's a team. So, all right.
Thank you. Yeah. Did you. Did you learn anything that was useful to you? Yeah. Well, for those of you who want to be actors, for those of you who don't want to be actors, you're very smart. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.